Welcome to InstaDAP Developer Tutorial Series. So today in this video, you will be learning how to set up Ethereum development environment for DSA. So we'll be starting from scratch and the first thing that we'll be, uh, that we'll be doing is opening terminal and creating a directory. So I'll be making a new directory on desktop. Okay, DIR, let's just name the directory in dev environment. So dv and v. And the first thing that uh, we are going to do in the directory is making it npm compatible by running, uh, by running the command npm init minus y. So let's just go to directory and make the directory npm compatible. So npm init minus y. So now our directory is npm compatible and now we'll be installing the libraries that we are going to require uh, in the process. So there is a list of five libraries and I'll be putting the list of the libraries in the in the description below. So let's just install the libraries by npm install. First is env truffle ganache cli dsa sdk and web3. So let's just install the libraries and now we'll, we'll now we'll wait for the libraries to get installed. So Now the libraries have been installed and you can see the respective versions here. And now what we'll be doing is we will be forking the Ethereum mainnet and for that purpose, we will be, uh, we will be requiring Infura project ID. So we'll just head over to infura.io And if you do not have any account, uh, if you don't have any account set up for Infura, you can just create one by hitting on get started for free. But since I have one and just log in and We'll just go to Ethereum and create a new project. Let's just name the project environment and just hit create. So it has created a uh, created a project for me, and here is a project ID, project secret, and it has exposed some endpoints for me, like a mainnet, Dropston, and other other test networks. So will be requiring the endpoint of mainnet so we'll just copy this uh, so we'll just get back to our terminal so let me first clear the output so that you can see the terminal better so clear and now we will fork the mainnet with the help of ganache cli so the command for forking is ganache cli minus minus fork and I'll be pasting the project ID that we copied from the Infura. And by the way, uh, I'll be putting the link to the GitHub repo so you can just clone the project from there if you want to. And the next thing is unlock. So what unlock does is you can unlock any account on Ethereum. Let's, uh, let us just say for the development environment, you need an account which has some amount of DAI so you can just unlock any account which you don't have which you don't have private key for so let's just unlock an account with maximum one of die so now we'll just head over to eth explorer which will tell us the holders of the die so these are all the holders of dies and we will just copy one of the addresses from here so let's just copy this address and and paste it here oh oops so i'll just remove the url from the address and in the command the next thing i'll provide is the port number so let will just say 7545 and the network id so ID so the main uh, the network ID of main it is one so one and I'll just hit, hit enter to run the command and it will just fork the main it for us I think oh there's some error so oh I just misspelled the unlock so I'll just correct it and unlock and now I think it will Fog the minute, yes, it has fog the minute for us, and you can see that the block number has fog the minute on, and the location of the infura 
project and the network id is one the time and here it, is, here it says it is listening on the port number 7545. So now we have successfully forked the mainnet and now we will interact with the DSA. So for that, let us first create .env file which will contain our private keys and addresses. So we'll just may, uh, have another tab of terminal and create a file by using touch.env. So let's say vim.env. So the structure of .env file is like public address. And now you can give the public address here. And in the next line, let's say you want to give private key. And here we can give the private key. So what this .env module does is it loads the environment variable into process.env. So we can keep our private keys and addresses separate from the code. So now I will just go into the, my .env file and you can also do the same. So now I have configured my .env file and the next thing we are going to do in the setup process is create a .js file so that we can interact with DSA. So I'll just create a .js, a .js file. Let's just name it dsa.js. And here I have, I have copy pasted the code from the GitHub repo uh, and the link in the uh, the link for the github repo is in the description below so you can check that so the first thing in the code is i have required the dot env module then the web3 and dsa libraries then there is instantiation of web3 provider and then the instantiation of dsa so in, in the instantiation of dsa i have provided the web3 provider and the mode of using the dsa so since we are using the dsa with node.js so i have provided node here and the next thing is the private key of the address you are using. So here uh, we are using the .env module thing. So process.env dot private key. And here is the build functionality. So if you do not have any DS account linked to your Ethereum address, you can create one by uncommenting this code. And the next thing in the code is the spells. So the spells I am going to use is the compounds, deposit, and withdraw. And here is the set and get functionalities. And the transfer functionality. And here is the cast function. So now what we're going to do is I'll just cast the I'll just uh, cast the spells by running the script. So node dc.js. And I'll just wait for the output. So the execution is complete. And the first thing it, in the output it has returned me is the DS account that are linked to my Ethereum address. So it is showing me that there are four DS accounts there uh, that are linked to my Ethereum address. And these are the following IDs and addresses. And the next thing in the output is the transaction hash, which has been returned by the cast function. So if you want to, uh, if you want to check the receipt of this transaction hash, what you can do is you can make the directory Debian V. Uh, like, uh, let's say you can just inst inst uh, instantiate the directory with Truffle in it. So let's just run the command Truffle in it and proceed anyway. So our just our directory just got in, in, initiated by the Truffle. And now what you're going to do is run, uh, let's just change the port number first. So let's just say vim truffle config.js. And now we are going to change the port number from 8545, which is default to 7545, which we have used in the Ganache CI command. So let's just change it to 7545 and save the file. Now I'll run truffle console. And now we'll check the receipt by uh, using web3. So await web3.eth.get transaction receipt. And now we'll provide it with the transaction hash. and just print the receipt variable. So it is a transaction receipt and it is showing me 
all the addresses, all the contract addresses, which the transaction has interacted with. So these are the contract addresses and these are the following transactions. So this is how you can set up the development environment and interact with the DSA. So that's it for the video. Thank you for watching.